All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Muafak Ahmed. I'm a serial entrepreneur, angel investor, and recently also a VC. We started a fund called Superhero Capital here in Finland. And I'm also an investor in a fund called 500 Startups in the US. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, an interesting topic. Everyone thinks, I think, in startups that VCs are like, almost like demigods, something to be feared and, and worshipped. But there's a, there's a surprise for you here. VCs do have bosses as well, and they're called LPs. So we have three LPs here. So they're called limited partners. So usually large, massive, or humongous amounts of funds invested into these VC funds. And uh, I'll let my panel to introduce themselves. OK, so I work for Scandia Mutual Life Insurance Company in Stockholm, Sweden. We are Sweden's largest life insurance company. And uh, our primary business is to manage people's pension money. We have 40 billion euros in assets under management, and 10% is allocated to private equity investments, including venture capital and growth capital. Um, we have been investing in venture since the 70s, and today we have almost 1.9 million billion euros invested and committed to venture capital funds globally. 70% is in the US and 25% is in Europe. Thank you. So we are a new kit on the block. Uh, we are a new organization, which we are now um, trying to get up and running early next year. We are focused on building an outperforming portfolio of European early stage managers. Uh, focusing exclusively on, on Europe and trying to bring a large institutional uh, capital into Europe who would like to get uh, exposure to European venture capital, but maybe doesn't know how or doesn't know where. So we are kind of trying to be a very specialist focused investor. Yeah. And I work for the European Investment Fund. And as you heard an hour ago, Thanks to Mr. Katainen and Mr. Vapaavuori, we can invest this year roughly 1 billion into European venture funds. Next year, the amount will be larger, thanks to the FC program. Overall, we have uh, capital under management around 10 billion uh, across 600 European VC and smaller buyout funds. So, thank you. Uh, so, what makes a good VC? So, what are the qualities you look in? Uh, in a fund and the managers that you invest in? Okay, so I'll start. Um, so our investment strategy, we, we have a pure bottom-up approach. Um, so it's purely fund selection. Um, it doesn't matter if the fund is in, in the US or in Europe, even though our investment strategy has, you know, the outcome has been that we have 70% in, in the US. Um, we try to look for experienced team. Um, if possible, we often look for um, DPs that have some type of competitive advantage. They might be the go-to firm within a specific region or within a specific sector. Um, they have often invested and built companies before, so they have built uh, or been entrepreneurs themselves. I think that's very important mm -hmm. for um, doing good uh, venture investments as well. Thank you. Uh, just to add to Natalia's comment, I think at EIF we can take a bit more risk. So we're happy to look at first-time teams as well. You don't need to have a track record as an investor necessarily. If you had entrepreneurial success, that counts as well. Thank you. So talking about risk, so often uh, being a startup uh, entrepreneur myself in the back, in the, back in the day, and now also with my own investments when we're trying to raise additional capital from VCs, they seem to be very afraid of risk. So what's your view on risk? How much risk should there be in a VC fund? Yeah, I, I actually think that's been like one a little bit um, early, early days, uh, European venture capital disadvantage that European VCs were a little bit afraid of risk. Mm. The nature of risk finance, if you eliminate all the risk, mm. you eliminate upside. Uh, but, you know, I think in Europe we had a, a quite significant mindset change in recent couple of, not maybe like four or five years, where experienced people went into the business uh, who are not afraid to go after really big ideas, but going after it, really big ideas does mean taking a significant amount of risk. And I think um, 
if you take a calculated risk and you are, you know, you know where you want to get, this is not really like a stupid risk. So I think it's um, it's a risky business, yeah. but there is a, you know there is a way to to make money in it. But uh, I think the the good entrepreneurs and VC out there they can manage the risk quite well. And actually, in the past five years, our VC portfolio has outperformed our buyout portfolio. So the returns are there as well in the venture business. Yeah. That's actually interesting because when I was raising with my partners um, the the new fund, um, we noticed that there's clearly more appetite for this kind of very early stage VC funds nowadays. Um, many of the LPs said that if we came two, three, four years ago, they would not even talk to us. And now there's, there's clearly some interest. I, I mean, events like Slush and the whole startup enthusiasm, I think, is, is definitely also a sign of that, that there's appetite for it. Mm. So, yes. Yeah, I think it's important to be a long-term investor mm. in this asset class because it's impossible to, to time markets. And, um, and, and we've done that, but I know that there are many, you know, as you refer to, that, that, that jumped out of the asset class in yeah. 2004 and five, and maybe in 08 and, mm -hmm. and nine as well, where we actually increased our allocation. I think that's important to be able to do that and be a long-term. Okay. So thinking of um, uh, that, like if you're raising a fund when I was doing that with my partners, we were, we were a first-time team and, um, when you don't have any track record, you're trying to make something up or, or at least convince the LPs that there's something in you. Um, so how, how much do you value operational experience? So that was something that we had from the past. I mean, I started my first company 28 years ago, and we thought that it's valuable. How, how do you see that? I, I think, uh, you know, I'm, I actually used to work in the organization when Johannes worked, so been also investing quite a lot. Uh, for me, and my personal view is that uh, venture capital business is not just finance. It's a hands-on hands business, it's technology business. You need to have at least some understanding how to create companies from scratch, not to get lost in this. Because you also need to evaluate people you're going to invest into in their capabilities. And if you have no ref fr uh, frame of reference, it's, it's probably not that easy thing to do. And what is interesting is that, I mean, the uh, mentality of European venture capitals have changed significantly. They view themselves now as, um, as a service to entrepreneurs, you know. And you need to relate to them and to their experience to, to, be, to be useful. So to provide the value, and if you provide the value, you also increase the value of your investment. So I think um, operational experience is important. First-time teams, uh, I'm a strong believer in first-time teams. I think, you know, you need, uh, very often, it's a cyclical industry, but it also has its own innovation phases. And I think first-time teams, very often, to bring a disruptive innovations to the market, and by doing that, they are very often able to actually outperform uh, the market. Yeah, I would say, I mean, you know, stick to your passion. If you're passionate about what you're doing, whether it's investments or building companies, I think that shows. We know you entrepreneurs work hard, but so do the VCs. So it's, it's not really lifestyle business. It's, it's hard work. Yeah. And it shows. Yeah, definitely. Uh, talking about returns. So what do you expect to see? So I can start. So we have a pure return target. And uh, every time we make an investment, we have to believe that um, it will generate at least 20% yearly return for us. And, and what that means in, in X, how many X the fund, how many times the fund uh, would that be? Well, it, it depends, but 20% yeah. per year, you know. I'm, I'm just trying to relate with the audience what, what kind of returns they would be then. Um, Probably you would want at least two times your money back, yeah. if, okay. if not even three times. In our portfolio, the top 10% out of the 300 funds, they have a net IRR, so internal rate of return above 15%. Uh, the top 10 have above 30%, so okay. it's obviously a very compelling uh, return. Yeah. Right. Uh, venture capital business is kind of a, 
across the spectrum, the performance level is quite spread. So like, you know, the top guys, top, top quartiles perform on the level of like three, four, five X your money invested. While kind of uh, the, the, the lower scale is, is you will help you get your money back. So I think uh, a good limited partner with a, a lot of venture experience typically expects uh, top quartile performance. Mm -hmm. so. Right. So then we've seen a lot of new funds being established in Europe uh, recently, and, and we're seeing these like big ones, like 50 to 200 or even above that, some of the mega funds as well, but also these really small ones, or micro VCs, or super angels. I haven't see, heard the term super angel in Europe yet, but I think we're gonna see those as well. So, so how do you see this, this, um, this market? Do you, do you spread your risk across these different uh, players, like, do you have a like, do you, or is your view of the portfolio that you also want to do the different phases or stages there? So I think we see the industry maturing a lot, and and we see that there's a growth capital gap in most European markets. So that's a segment we're looking at closely, but we're also happy to back super angels raising their funds and and bringing their network and know-how into the industry. So. We look at uh, all stages across the spectrum and try to fill funding gaps where we see them. Okay. Uh, I personally believe in uh, early stage venture capital funds, mm -hmm. uh, the way we are building our strategy. It doesn't mean that gross venture capital is something which is not worth doing. It's just something which, which we are not specializing in. And I think it's um, early stage um, venture become quite interesting in Europe. Uh, with also like uh, the whole venture capital dynamic uh, you can now experience in venture stage because you don't need so much money to start a company. It actually becomes a very interesting asset class to play with. But at the same time, there is like much, much more early stage managers. So for us to, to find the right investments, it means actually a lot of hands-on work and searching and analyzing. Yeah, I think that's an interesting development that we've seen also in like uh, five, ten years ago when you started. Um, my background is in software, so I'm, I'm just talking about software here predominantly. But starting a software company would cost like five million, the initial ticket, because you had to buy your servers and your uh, Oracle license for one million, what have you. It's, it was really expensive. Nowadays, it's usually two, three people, uh, a few laptops, the software is open source from the cloud. 50k, 100k will take you quite far. And I think that's also impacting this, that we're seeing more and more of these early stage VCs with smaller funds. Um, but actually, the other thing I want to talk about, because in investing in the early stage is, of course, one thing, or any stage. But then the next thing is the exit. So how do you see the exit market in Europe? Because, I mean, we're seeing some unicorns here. So companies with more than one billion valuation, um, but we are not seeing lots of IPOs. And how, how do you see that uh, in Europe and well, or globally, if you have a global view? I mean, yeah, that's a challenge <laughs> here in Europe. Even though I mean, we are seeing more and more companies that are being sold, and yeah. that, you know, some are even. Um, have managed to do IPOs that are on the way to make IPOs, but yeah, I think that's one of the biggest differences. Also, that you know, the exit markets, you know, the ex ex access to exit markets in in yeah. the US, of course. Um, but yeah, maybe to add to that, uh, a ratio that we look at closely as a fund of funds are uh, distributions over capital calls, and now we are a pretty at at a healthy level, so we are getting more more and more distributions from our VCs, and then we have more capital to deploy. So we find that there is a good balance uh, between exits and then commitments. Where do you think those exits are coming at the moment, predominantly or primarily? I think it's a lot of uh, trade buys and sells, so a lot of strategic yeah. buyers out there, especially in the early stage. And that has been a bit the, the issue with European uh, founders and entrepreneurs, that they've been too eager to sell rather than have a, have a large global ambition and build a, build a global company. But we've seen uh, IPOs in our portfolio in the past 12 months, so it's, it's picking up on that side as well. Yeah, what I've also seen is that there's, uh, there is a lot of interest, but it's usually from other continents. So it's either from Asia or the US. Like uh, We had an investment in a company called Prite, P-R-Y-T-E, 
and um, it was sold in six months to Facebook a year and a half ago. It's very exceptional. It had a history. It was kind of a spin-off from another company, but still. Uh, but we would not have seen an exit like that in Europe, I think. It's very highly unlikely. Um, but talking about raising a fund, so, um, or funding first, let's talk about that first. So what's your advice for a startup entrepreneur if, if they want to raise funding from VCs? How, would they sh how should they look at the VCs and do the due diligence there? Because it should be both ways. It's not just looking for money. It's you need to understand the VCs. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, it's a, it's a long-term game. You're gonna be spending a lot of time uh, with with your investor, and it's not about money. Money actually is a commodity right now in Europe. I think uh, you should really find out what is it you want your investor to help you with, and if yeah. this person is has a capability or the firm has a capability. Yeah. I think um, definitely making reference calls and checking the track record of the firm, of the investor, and what they have been able to, to, to help yeah. and value it. Yeah, I think most of the VCs have their portfolio companies listed on their website, so at least worth checking in which companies yeah. they have invested before. Thank you. I think we're soon running out of time, but one more question. If there's someone in the audience who is thinking of starting a new fund, what would you recommend them for them to do? Just reach out uh, to European Investment Fund. We look at all proposals. Yeah, I mean, from our perspective, you need to raise at least a hundred million dollar euro fund for us to be able to invest and to really have a clear strategy of what you want to do. Yeah. Place themselves in our shoes and, and ask the question, would you invest in yourself and how much? And then kind of work out from there. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for the audience. Okay. Thank you.